Hey guys, Jam here, and it's been a while since I released a video, so I thought I'd get back into it with something, you know, a little bit more simple today. So I thought I'd have a little bit of fun just making up uh, Death Watch Ancient. Now the reason why I'm actually making this dude is I was kind of inspired by this limited edition Intercessor Sergeant that GW released a while ago. And it was mainly the base, and obviously with my lore and kind of theme for my Death Watch, they are fighting against Necron, so I thought this would be... Kind of the perfect opportunity to do this. Although I'm not really sure Death Watch is the best army for an ancient. I don't know if they really have flag bearers waving around. They're more of like a sneaky tactical kind of thing. But it's a reason for me to use him in an army one day. Now the base of this model is going to be the ancient from the old Dark Imperium set. I think you can still buy it on GW. But they have recently released a completely separate Primaris Ancient now. Which, to be honest, you'll see later on when I do some green stuff work and everything on the banner and the sword and everything. If I just used that guy straight out of the box, I probably didn't have to do any work at all. But we've got this guy, so we're just going to spruce him up a little bit. Now, because I'm doing Death Watch and this guy's shoulder pads are molded on, well, mostly the left-hand shoulder pad, I'm going to have to snip that off. Well, not completely. So I first go in with my hobby clippers and I just start taking out big chunks of plastic. And once we've got like the general shape that we want to get, then I'll go in with my hobby knife and I'll start taking like smaller bits off, you know, just fine tuning the shape you want and like dry fitting the Death Watch shoulder pad every now and again, just to make sure that we're not cutting too much off. Because it's easy to cut more off, but you can never put more back on. Well, I mean, that's not exactly true. You can do green stuff, but <laughs> why make more jobs? Then once I got it to the kind of size that I think will be perfect, I just glued the body together. And then the right hand arm, there's a peg there because you know most of these easy build kind of things always have pegs. And I'm just going to snip that off and make it nice and flush with my hobby knife. Then once that was done, I want to do glue the sword arm immediately. As you can see, I'm like testing out some different sword arms. Most of them are from the Blade Guard Veteran kits. But because I wanted to make a fancy base with this guy, as I was kind of dry fitting everything, I was like, well, it probably makes more sense for me to make the base first. Then I can kind of figure out you know, sticking the banner on and which way I want the sword to go, kind of get his like motion going then. So the base was the priority here. And in order to do that, I just cut off a really big blob of green stuff, just 50-50 uh, between blue and yellow, nothing fancy there. And uh, yeah, just started mixing it together till it turned green. Obviously, always keeping your hands wet and stuff like that, you don't want the green stuff to start sticking to you. But just keep molding that, and like I said, until it turns green and you got no little bits of color in there. And once I was all mixed up, I just chucked the entire blob onto the base and started shaping it up with my hands. You know, obviously, like I said before, keep your fingers wet. And just made sure the top was kind of flat. You don't want it to be too lumpy and wavy because obviously you got to get this guy to stand on there. But I just started moving it into the places that I want with my fingers and just shaping around the edges. You know, I don't want any bits hanging off and stuff like that. Now, I've got quite a few Necron Warrior bits lying around, so I'm going to use some of the torsos for this space. But first, I want to see the position that he was going to stand in. So once I get an idea of where I want to do, I just kind of squeeze his feet into the green stuff to kind of give an impression of where he's going to stay, so then I can move the the bits and the pieces and the, like the rocks and everything into the green stuff, but not obscuring where he's going to be standing. Now, as you can see, I stick a bit of slate chips in there as well because, you know, Green stuff doesn't really look like rock or anything like that, so I want to get a bit more texture into here. So I will be chucking in more slate chips, and I've got little pebbles and stuff like that. But most importantly, I get this Necron torso, like I said before. I've kind of sliced it up in places just to make sure it kind of fits there, you know. Just one of those things you kind of just feel where you want to put it, and you can change things up, cut things apart. And I just squeeze it into the green stuff. And while I'm doing all those stuff, like putting the things into the green stuff and building the base up, I'm periodically just putting the guy onto the base as well to make sure he still fits where I want him to fit. I got another Necron warrior and I kind of brought him up to the base to see where I wanted to snip him off. So I ended up clipping him off by this like halfway through the spine. But then I used my hobby knife to kind of hollow out the spine a little bit. It almost looks like maybe fluid gets pumped through or something like that. Later on when I'm painting it I'm gonna have some like bright glowing Necron green kind of dripping out of this. I think that's going to be quite cool as well. 
So I sink this one face first into the dirt, and then I take one of his arms, slice off the forearm slash hand bit, and then I once again just kind of squeeze it into the green stuff. So this guy already looks like he's been pummeled and ground into the dirt here. Now the other arm on this warrior would normally be the arm that's holding the gun and all that stuff, but I kind of thought maybe just leaving off his arm completely. So added another slate chip in there, and I'm adding, gonna add some small pebbles around this. It looks like rocks and debris have just kind of collapsed on him there as well. Once again, whenever you're doing fancy bases, just keep checking that your dude actually still fits on nicely. And another thing that's kind of running through my Death Watch bases is Bob Wire. So I got this wire stuff that kind of looks like Bob Wire from Green Stuff World. And generally what I do is I'll wrap it around a pencil or a pen or something like that just so you get that wound up, well, Bob Wire <laughs> feeling. So yeah, it got a bit of that and I just stuck it into the Green Stuff as well. So, you know, it's got a bit of a war zone feeling. Now that I think I've got the base where I kind of wanted at, you know, I've got all my pebbles, my necrons, my slate chips, all that kind of stuff in there. I just want to clean up the edges, make it like once again, like I said before, I don't want any green stuff and all that kind of hanging off the sides. Now you can use your hands or your hobby knife or something like that, once again, keeping it wet to clean this up. But quite a while ago, I invested into a few more tools because I've been doing this hobby in the videos and stuff just using knives and stuff like that but I got some wax carvers now they really really help out with doing green stuff like this so I'm just going to use one of them to kind of press in the edges and all that and just kind of get a nice smooth finish there and if you do get any fingerprints which by the end of this I actually kind of do because I can miss them but use a wet paintbrush as well to just kind of smooth your green stuff out which I should have done a little bit more of myself so at this point, as you can see, I've got the dude on the base, but I didn't glue him or anything like that. It's squeezed him straight into the green stuff. It, it's a pretty strong hold. And I was relatively satisfied with it, but not 100% sold on the base and how everything was fitting. But that's something we'll come back to in a bit. But at first, let's actually finish the marine off here. So the helmet I wanted to use for this was this Primaris helmet. I'm not 100% sure where I got it from, which kit it is. But it had that kind of laurel reef, whatever you call it, around the head, which obviously matches the banner as well, so I thought that was quite nice. But as always, I usually like to get my weapons in place first and then stick my heads on so I can kind of get the position in a, bit, a little bit better. So I had, like I said before, I had a few swords. I mean, I think ancients now can also take, like they take, well, originally could take bolt guns, now they can take swords. I think for Death Watch, I mean, I imagine a bolt gun's probably the better option, but I kind of like just going for a sword on this one. And I could have gone for something more dynamic, like the Blade of Vetch one pointing out, but I don't know, something about a banner bearer just kind of like stoically standing there, triumph, like triumphantly, on top of a bunch of dead Necrons, he's just sliced up, just kind of felt right to me. So I went for this one from, the, I think it's one of the easy build Blade got veterans you got from like Indominus and stuff like that. So I used that sword and I thought it fit perfectly. Then all I did was stuck the helmet on and got into the position that I wanted. Now in order to pizzazz this guy up a little bit and also give him a bit more of a death watchy feel, I had this loincloth left from my death watch watch captain that I sliced up for a video quite a while ago. I'll link it up here if you want to watch that one. But I thought with a bit of snipping here and there, this loincloth will fit perfectly and it'll, you know, give that guy a bit more of a, a presence. And with the keys and scrolls and stuff like that, he's got a bit more of a secrecy kind of thing going on as well. Now the loincloth pretty much fit perfectly. I had to clip a bit of the knee pad trim off just to make sure that can fit there. And obviously I had to snip a little bit off the back of the loincloth as well just to get into shape. But you know, just one of those things you have to dry fit, cut a little bit more, dry fit, kind of work things out that way. But one thing I should have actually done was get the loincloth on before getting this guy onto the base and stuff because it was actually kind of getting in the way of the Necron there and it was just really difficult to try and dry fit it and get into the place that I wanted to. So it was a bit of a mistake on my side there, but you know, I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> it's been a while since I've uh, done a kit bash on camera. But once I got the loincloth on there, I stuck the backpack on, which I think was from the limited edition Lieutenant Amulius or something like that. I can't remember the name, but it was one of those special characters, I, I think. But I just thought he needed a fancy backpack once again. He's an ancient. He needs something kind of fancy going on, doesn't he? 
and of course the death watch shoulder pads on there but like i said the loincloth was in the way of the necron in the front another one was like underneath him i think it was just kind of obscuring the base so i ended up just ripping this guy off and trying to figure out where to put him next so as you can see i took the banner off and all that you know i wanted to you know, move him around the bay, see if there's anything I can maybe change up, maybe put some more rocks, maybe do something to get him into a better position that's not really hiding the detail of this model. Eventually I settled on the fact that the Necron that was initially underneath him looking upwards, I wanted his boot to be on his face, so basically just like he just crushed him. So I've snipped the head off of this guy, smoothed the body out so everything's nice and flat so this guy gets a nice like footing there. But then all I did was I glued him back on. I'm not too worried about the gaps where the footprints and stuff works. We'll be filling this up with like texture, paste and all that stuff later. But obviously some of the places where the feet are now, they don't look quite connected to the base. So later on, I'll stick a couple little bits of slate or pebbles underneath it just to connect to there. And once again, like I said, I'll be adding on like Agrilin Earth or something like that just to fill out any gaps that I don't like. Now there was also a little bit of a gap where I glued the loincloth and it didn't look quite right to me but also I felt like I needed something more in that area just kind of bulk him out a little bit more. So I got this little bone trinket thing from the Primaris Intercessor kit and I just glued it on next to that. And of course it wouldn't be Death Watch unless you had some sort of baggy grenade bullet thing strapped to your chest as well. I've always got those tactical pouches there. So I just slapped one of them on as well. So, you know, like I said, it just gives that Death Watchy tactical feeling, which I quite like. And also I just realized I didn't really show it, but I put a purity seal on his sword arm and on the backpack as well. Once again, he's a fancy dude. I just wanted a little bit extra something to bulk him out. And also when I paint the black armor later, there's those little touches of like the paper color and stuff to give it a bit more warmth. Now I was actually looking at banner artwork and stuff like that for 40k and they quite often got like two long like tassely bits hanging from the sides and I thought you know what I'm gonna green stuff to those bad boys and like I said at the begin beginning of the video I realized the new Primaris Ancient already has those inbuilt so to be honest all those hard work is kind of for nothing you could if you have that then you don't need to do any green stuff but I didn't really realize that at the time so what I'm going to do now, once again, is roll up my green stuff 50-50, you know, between the yellow and blue. Mix it up same as before. And then what I want to do is I want to start rolling out a really, really fine kind of sausage. Quite a long bit. And then when I got it to the kind of length that I want, and once again, keeping your surface wet and your tools wet and all that kind of stuff. And I try to keep the sausage thing when I was like rolling out as uniform as I possibly could. Then you want to take your paintbrush or something like that or a toothpick and just roll it over the top of it so it becomes flat. So you've got like a parchment paper kind of vibe instead. And then I just kind of did a dry fit to see the length that I wanted and all that kind of stuff. And before wrapping it on and like sticking it onto the banner, I actually wanted it to be kind of tapered and pointed at the end. I don't know if tapered is the correct word for that. But you know, pointed like an arrowhead. If you look at the bottom of the banner, it obviously goes into a triangular shape. So I kind of want to mimic that with the purity seals that I, or parchment that I'm going to be hanging off the sides of this as well. Just a small little detail there that I thought would help it fit in. And then I just moved it into the position and length that I wanted. Wrapped the top of it around the kind of little pole section there. I did that for both of these, obviously. But I also wanted to get a bit more texture into these parchment purity seal kind of things. Like... You quite often see with GW purity seals that are a bit ripped and torn and stuff like that. So I used my hobby knife just to nick the edges. And I think I went a little bit too overboard to be perfectly honest. But maybe once I've given it a proper paint job, you know, written the scroll work down and stuff, it'll, it'll look a little bit better. But I think less is more in this kind of situation. And one thing I did do at the top where it's kind of wrapped around as well. I used the end of my toothpick to kind of just push in the middle so it kind of look gives a bit of an indent somewhere for the wash to go and it looks like it's wrapped up nice and tight as well. Now the next step and definitely the most important step is trying to get the ripples in it. You don't want to just a flat bit just kind of flapping in the wind. Well it wouldn't look like it's flapping in the wind. So what I did to replicate this kind of effect is I just 
lay the model down on the table, go one wet toothpick underneath the banner, and then one on the top, and then it's kind of like, use the one to hold it in place, and while the other one like push downwards, and I do the opposite, like one hold it down, the other one push upwards and stuff like that. I don't know if that really <laughs> makes any sense. You can see on the screen right now. So you can kind of get those curves and those ripples, because it's kind of hard to do when green stuff is still quite fresh. So if you try and push it upwards without the other toothpick there, it'll just, the whole entire strap will just move around. So it doesn't really help out that way. Once again, don't think I'm explaining this very well. Hopefully you can see it on the screen. Now at first I was thinking maybe I'm adding too many ripples in, but then I looked at the purity seals at the bottom of the banner and they're moving quite a lot. So there's always quite a lot of ripples in pure GW purity seal. So I think it's an efficient amount of ripples. Now once the ripples were done, I just made sure I had everything kind of blowing in the same direction. As you can see, his loincloth is blowing to one direction, so I wanted to get the banners to go that way as well. But I'm also wanting to have enough contact with the flag so it's not just a loose bit of green stuff in the air that's just going to snap off. And just for an extra bit of strength, I do super glue some contact points as well, just to give it an extra bit of strength. Having a model look good is important. But if it's a gaming piece, you also want it to be kind of strong. You don't want things just to be breaking off. So you've got to be kind of practical with these kind of things. But once that's all in place, this model is pretty much done. So I'm going to give this guy a very, very quick and rough paint job. Like I said, I wanted to get something quick out to you guys because it's been such a long time since I've done a video. So <laughs> don't judge me on that. But let's get to that part and I'll see you after the little showcase. And there you have it, ladies and gents, in all his ancient banner-bearing glory. Like I said before, just a really quick paint job on this. I just wanted to get kind of a base coat of wash and a very quick highlight on some of the stuff, just to give him a bit of life. But, you know, I think he turned out pretty decent for a quick little kit bash. But most importantly, what do you guys think? Do you think it comes across as kind of a Death Watchy ancient? Does he look regal and... <laughs> um, fancy enough I guess now most importantly as you can see this guy doesn't have a chapter icon or anything like that now his shoulder is painted in that blue color because I was thinking of going for crimson fists but as I was doing that I was thinking you know what I'm actually gonna leave it up to you guys comment below what you think this guy should be crimson fist imperial fist I don't know that he, those are the kind of chapters that feel fit the aesthetic of this guy especially with like you know, the helmet and all that kind of stuff. I don't think it'll quite work for a space wolf or anything, but you know, blood angels, all that kind of stuff works pretty well. So just let me know. And if I have the transfers or whatever, then I'll choose that. But once again, guys, thanks for sticking around. I know videos have been very, very scarce this year. I want to at least release another one or two this before the end of this year. But if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You know, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. I do obviously have a Patreon, but you know, I haven't really been releasing videos all that often, so it's kind of hard to persuade people to go join that. But if you do, that would be nice. Thank you. It really helps me kind of, you know, keep the bits box full, so to speak, for all these conversions. But until the next one, guys, bye bye.